Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Amartya Rupani. And first of all, I would like to wish you all a very happy Navratri. And I hope you guys are enjoying this beautiful festival season with your family, the way I am doing. So anyways, in this video, I'm going to talk about engineer in training program, as most of you are requested to make video on this. So I will walk you through its complete step-by-step -step process to get registered, its benefits, its fees, and many more. So without wasting any time, please start. Okay, let's first understand that what EIT is. An engineer in training is a title given to an individual that has completed the academic requirements towards becoming a professional engineer, means PNG. But they still have to meet work experience requirements to be a certified engineer. And guys, I've already made a detailed video about PNG license where you can check the requirements and the link of that video is given in the description box below. Now, what are the benefits of being an EIT? One of the biggest advantages of getting an EIT is it actually improves your career opportunities. That means most of the employers or hiring manager look for employees who have EIT title in their resume. Another benefit of being an EIT is you get opportunities to attend different events where you can meet and network with licensed engineers who can give you advice on everything you need to know. Also, making these meaningful connections can help you later on in your career when you're looking to transition into a professional engineer. So those connections will be super useful for your job referrals, career advice, or mentorship. Holding an EIT designation also helps you to become eligible to participate in PEO's licensure assistance program. So basically, this program connects EIT with licensed professional engineers from PEO. And those professional engineers provide guidance and support to the interns as they progress towards obtaining their PNG license. So as soon as you become an EIT member, you can apply to this program. And guys, the registration process is super straightforward. And the link of this page is given in the description box below. And guys, you will also get an opportunity to join the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers. OSPE represents the entire community of engineering profession in Ontario. After becoming the member of OSPE, they will help you connect and contribute as you progress through your career. And as an OSPE member, you can get tons of benefits such as job search workshops, engineering employment events, professional development courses. Also, they will support you all the way to your PNG license. And in order to become an OSPE member, you need to pay an annual fees that depends on membership type. The fees for each membership type is listed in this form and it is given in the description box below. You can check it out. And guys, I wanted to specify one thing that EIT program does not offer you any job or it does not give you any placement in any company. However, you can get all these benefits that I just mentioned. Now, let me walk you through the number of steps to get registered in EIT program to become an EIT member. So the first step is to submit your application and it is super straightforward and easy process all you have to do is just go to their official website and the link of this is given in the description box below i wanted to mention that due to covid 19 uh, they have made some changes in their application process before we had to mail our application to their address but now due to covid 19 everything is online so you need to submit your application through email so anyways, uh, let me show you the application form that you need to fill out and you can get it from this link and it is given in the description box below as I said. So this is the application form that you need to fill out and it is super straightforward uh, process to do it. And as you can see, there are a total 8 pages. So the first 4 pages is your guide uh, that will provide you the instructions how to fill out your application and it will also give you the information that what documents are required what is the total cost to become a licensed engineer what information to be entered in the form and stuff like this so please read this guide it will help you to avoid all the mistakes and the rest four pages is your main application that you need to fill out so please enter all the information that is required and attach all the required documents as well let me just show you the list of all those documents that you need to attach with your application. 
So, if you are a graduate of a non-Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board Engineering Program, that is non-CEAB, then this is the list that you need to provide. I will explain this to you in a bit that what does non-CEAB means. But for now, please see the list and the link of this um, page is given in the description box below. You can check that out. And this one is for the graduates of CEAB program. Okay, now let's move on to the next stage, which is the assessment of your application by PEO. Now, at this stage, PEO confirms whether your degree is equivalent to that of a graduate of a CEAB accredited program. Now, what is CEAB program? So, basically, it is a Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board that assesses the engineering to ensure Canada's engineering education system remains amongst the best in the world. So, PEO will need to review the transcript with the bachelor's degree after the PNG application has been received to confirm to the applicant whether the academic requirement has been satisfied or not. And based on the assessment by Academic Requirement Committee, there are three possible outcomes that you can get and those are A, B and C. And let me explain those to you one by one. Okay, so the first outcome is A, which means the applicant has met the academic requirements and can go for the next step. But most of the time it happens only when you have a degree from inside of Canada, that means you have degree from Canadian Institute, then you will get outcome A and you can go for your next step. But in most of the cases, if you have degree from outside of Canada, then you will get outcome B, which means you haven't met academic requirements and you will have to write technical exams which is also called confirmatory exams and outcome c means you haven't met the requirements for png application at all now in the decision if you have received outcome b that means you will have to write technical exams which is also called confirmatory exams as i said so you will be assigned four technical exams in total so the passing marks for each exam is at least 50 percent and you must achieve the average of technical exam marks at least 55% altogether. And if you fail two out of four assigned exams, then they will assign you other 18 exams in order for you to meet the academic requirements. And that is called Discipline Specific Exams Program. But in some cases, they might call you for the interview instead of assigning these exams to prove your technical skills and work experience requirements. But the good news is, if you are assigned with exams, then they have a policy which is called Good Performance Review, which says if an applicant writes two technical exams at the first sitting and achieves a minimum average of 65% in both exams with no marks below 60% in each exam, then you can get exempted from the other two exams. That means you don't have to write other two exams anymore. You can get exempted from one exam out of four if you pass three technical exams in two exam settings and you achieve 60% or more in each technical exam. You can also meet third criteria in this policy. If you attempted two exams in the first setting but failed one, then you may still qualify for a good performance review and can get exempted from one exam out of four. If you pass failed exam with marks of 70% or higher and achieve 60% or higher in third exam that you write in second setting. Now there is time frame for you to write your technical exams in order for you to get your PNG license. So the academic year of uh, PEO starts from September 1st and ends at August 31st. And you must write your first exam within the two academic years after getting letter from uh, PEO. And once you start your exam program, then you must write at least one exam in each academic year. And the total time frame for you to complete your four assigned technical exams is eight years but if you're assigned 10 uh, i mean 18 exams then you will have 10 years to complete those guys i just wanted to give you a tip if you are assigned 18 exams which is also called discipline specific exam program and of course it is not an easy job to pass all of these exams but you still have option to get exempted from these 18 exams once you get a job in canada and achieve four to five years of experience in your field as an engineer then you can write a letter to PEO saying that uh, you have got work experience in Canada and you can prove your technical skills through interview instead of writing those 18 exams 
I'm saying this because they have made exceptions in the past with other candidates and their exams got waived uh, by the interview. And if you want to see what exams will be offered for your engineering area, then this is the page where you can go and find your field of engineering. Let's say if you are from industrial engineering, then uh, click list of exams. And then it will take you on this page where you will see the complete list of all the exams for industrial engineering. In the latter, you will get this list and you will have to do three exams from group A and B and one exam from complementary studies. And they will also provide instructions in the letter that what exams to be chosen from this list under certain conditions. And when you go back on the same page, you will find another link uh, that says recommended books for the exams. So these are the list of books uh, that you need to refer in order to uh, pass those exams for industrial engineering. So anyways, this is how you find the list of exams and uh, recommended books for your area of engineering. And this is the website where you can get all the previous technical exams for all the engineering areas such as electrical engineering, mechanical, civil. And the link of this website is given in the description box below. So you can go there and get your exams of your own field for the past years. And you can get registered in this program right after meeting the academic requirements. So the fees for EIT, if you get registered in, is $101.70. Okay, guys, so that was pretty much it for today. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment box. I will try my best to answer them as soon as possible. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and do subscribe my channel because there is a lot more coming up for you guys till then. You take care and I'll see you again.